And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. This week, the much-anticipated hearings on the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to be an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court got underway. From the very beginning, it was a three-ring circus. Now, the Democrats clearly understood that no minds were being changed during the course of those hearings. In fact, many of them, including our senator here in Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, had announced that they were going to be against Judge Kavanaugh regardless of what came out in the hearings. And in fact, some of them even said they were against Judge Kavanaugh before he was even nominated. So you got a real clear understanding of where things were going. But there's going to be a presidential election in two years, and this seemed to be an audition for some of them to their base constituency. And as a result, an awful lot of political theater. Now, if you're gonna engage in political theater, it better be good. And Cory Booker, for example, I don't think made the grade with his, this is my Spartacus moment. If that was it, good luck in the future. You know, Joe Biden, for those Democrats, is beginning to look pretty good after all. But the hearings continued, and here is the problem for the left side of the aisle. The ninnies in the back of the room, a hundred or more of them getting arrested, you know, really set the tone and created the visuals for what went on in that hearing. That's not a good message for the Democrats. For them to be identified as simply disruptive and out of order and obstructionist is not the message they want to be sending right now. The bottom line is this, Brett Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed by the Senate. I think he will get a couple of Democratic votes. I'm out of the prediction business, but I'll put the over under it. 53 or 54 right now, Brett Kavanaugh gets confirmed. He deserves it. Eminently well-qualified judge. The left side is right about one thing, though. It will shift the balance of power, at least in terms of the philosophy of the court. Other things happening this week, of course, included the New York Times op-ed published by the Times a anonymous source, something they rarely do, and you can make your own judgments about whether or not that was a good idea. But regardless of what you thought of the piece, you have to concede that it was significant and had a significant impact and probably will for some time yet to come. But there are a couple of really disturbing questions there. First of all, why the person that wrote that would choose anonymity? If you truly feel as strongly as they apparently did, wouldn't it be the more honorable thing to do to stand up to say publicly this is what's going on from my vantage point, from my position, and I'm resigning my position as a result. That's courage. The other thing is, you know, no chief executive should have staff people undermining their position or freelancing on their own. That's simply outside of our constitutional construct. And furthermore, is something that really is detrimental on a variety of different levels. And look, if you want to make policy, you put your name on a ballot. The president, any other chief executive, any other person in leadership has the right as the person elected by the people to do a job to have the staff follow through on their directives and orders and on their policy decisions. They were elected for that reason. Finally, this week we had some more primaries, particularly Democratic ones, and in Massachusetts, another upset, Michael Capuano, a ardent liberal, 20-year member of Congress, defeated by Ms. Presley in that election there, very, very similar to the Ocasio-Cortez situation in New York, where socialist Democrats are winning primaries. We've had it in state legislative races where Democratic incumbents are defeated by the far, far left. And Thomas Perez, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, says socialism is the wave of their future. Good luck with that. America simply isn't there. The Democratic Party has traditionally been a capitalist party, one that believed in a bigger social safety net than the Republicans. That was a fair debate. But when they walk down that road, I think they're walking down a very, very precarious path. If, underline if, the Democrats are successful in taking the House, my prediction is that the moderate Democrats will once again want their voices to be heard in very clear and unmistakable terms, and the person who may truly be in peril, Nancy Pelosi. And so for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.